Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you five ways that you can cut video inside of DaVinci Resolve 17.1. So the simplest and most typical way of cutting your video into separate clips is to go into blade edit mode. So you can do that from the edit mode timeline by clicking here or hitting B on your keyboard. When you do that, you're going to have a new cursor. When you hover over your clips, it'll look like a little razor blade. And wherever you want to make a cut, you just hover over your clip. You look for the red line that's going to go from top to bottom, indicating where the slice is going to be and which clips it's going to slice. And then you left click. So note that any linked clips are going to be cut at the same time by default. If for some reason you only want to cut the clip you're hovering over and no linked clips, you can go over here in the timeline to where it says linked selection. Click that and now when you make your cut, it's only going to cut the specific clip that you're hovering over. So in this case, video only. If I click on the video clip and it leaves the audio clip alone. Worth noting is that if you hit play, worth noting is that if you hit spacebar or the play button to go into playback mode that while it's playing back, you can still left click and make those edits while the timeline is playing back. So another way that you can slice your video is to actually use a key combination to do the same thing. So that is control B on the keyboard. And where it's going to make the slice is wherever your timeline cursor currently is. So if I hit space to go into play mode, and I want to make a cut at any instant, I can hit control B and a slice is going to be made exactly where the timeline cursor is. So if I control B again, we have another slice. If I hit spacebar and go back into non playback mode, the functionality is the same. If I hit control B, wherever the timeline cursor is, is going to receive that slice. So more often than not, you're going to need to manually move your timeline cursor around and find the exact frame where you want to make a cut. So you can just hit control B there, move it again, hit control B, and you can do that as many times as you'd like for your video clips. Now this also works over on the cut page. So if we go to the cut page and we have these video clips, I can scrub through them. Once again, wherever the timeline cursor is positioned, Note that this timeline and this one are always synced up with each other. I hit control B and that is where the clips are going to be separated from one another. So this middle timeline here, you can click around in it to jump through the entire duration of your timeline, everything from start to finish as you currently have it set up for your video project. And then this timeline down below is more for looking at the small details. As you can see, it only shows a few seconds of uh, video footage onto this timeline at one point in time. So once again, hit control B. Functionality is otherwise pretty much the same. And you can make as many cuts as you need to. So the third option, which is specific to the cut page, instead of having blade edit mode, what you get is this split clips button over here, which is effectively going to do the same thing as hitting control B on the keyboard, where it's going to split the clips at where the timeline cursor happens to be. But rather than using a keyboard shortcut, you use a icon on the hotkey. So once again, if you want to make a cut, you have to position your timeline cursor, hit split clips. You can do that while the video plays back. So if I hit space to go into play mode and I get to a moment where I might want to make a cut, I just hit split clips. I can do that multiple times as much as I need to. But do keep in mind that if you're on the cut page, then you're not going to have access to that blade edit mode like you would on the edit page. So that's one major difference between these two options. Okay, so our fourth option for cutting your video is to use in out markers. So if we go up to the mark menu, you can see all of the hotkeys associated with these. The basic way of using in out markers is to use the I hotkey for marking an end point or the start of the section you're trying to mark. And then the O hotkey is for marking an out point. As you can see, there are also options for marking video only and audio only, but I would rarely use that. So if you want to cut your video in this way using in out points, then you would find the first point in which you want to cut away from your video, and then you would hit I to set an end point. So you'll notice that when you have an out point set that everything between your in point and your out point are going to have this little gray bar. It's also going to be highlighted as a section in your timeline. The in point currently goes all the way to the end because we don't have an out point set. So if we go a little bit further in the timeline and hit O to set an out point, then now we've defined a section, a 
definitive start point and end point. We can also click on these dots that get created if we need to stretch that a little bit further. As we adjust these, you'll see the starting and ending frames, so you can be sure exactly where you're going to be making your cuts. And if you want to undo these selections, you can always go up to the mark menu and do clear in, clear out, or clear in and out with the Alt I, Alt O, or Alt X hotkeys, respectively. So how we actually make our cut here is that now that we have this section, we just go ahead and hit Control X. And that is going to cut everything between our endpoint and our out point straight out of the timeline uh, without making a slice here. So now if we want to cut away this selected section, everything between these two points, we can either hit Control X to cut this section away from the timeline, or I'll hit Control Z. We can do Control Shift X to do a ripple delete on this area. So the difference is when we do a ripple delete, everything to the right gets pushed over to the left. So we're not left with any black space whatsoever. And that can be a little bit of a time saver because generally when you're making your video, you don't want random black gaps in the middle. So once again, that's Control X to do a cut and then Control Shift X to do a ripple cut. So now that we have this selection made, we have a bunch of options for removing it from the timeline. If we want to cut it away and keep it in the buffer, we can hit Control X to cut it. So when it's in the buffer, we can still Control V to paste it in as long as we haven't cut away anything else. So that's one way you can move the clip around. If you hit Control Shift X instead, it does a ripple cut where everything to the right in the timeline gets pushed over to the left and it removes the black space automatically. Once again, we can hit Control V to paste in what we cut away, or we can use backspace on the keyboard to delete it without putting it in the buffer or the delete key in order to ripple delete, which once again does not put it in the buffer, but does move everything to the right of that gap over to the left to fill the black space. And the fifth way I want to show for how you can cut video in DaVinci Resolve is to use in out points, but before you even add a clip to the timeline. So if you're bringing in a video and you know one specific clip or a few clips that you definitely want to use in your timeline, you don't have to bring the entire video onto your timeline and edit it there directly. You can save yourself a couple steps by going to the media pool. You can double click on the video that you want to add to your timeline. And here you can see the preview timeline for that video. So you just need to navigate around, find the moment you want to use on your timeline in your final video, hit I to set an endpoint, and optionally, you can go and set O for an out point as well. It's also possible to not have an end point, but only an out point. So we could go up to mark and clear in if we wanted to use everything from the start to this point in the timeline. Um, generally, if I was selecting a clip though, I would have it in and an out point. So now when we actually go and bring this video clip into the timeline by uh, dragging and dropping is one way, you'll notice that what ends up in the timeline is much shorter than the original duration of our base video clip because now we're only bringing in the areas that were selected with those in out points. So that's one way that you can just cut away a lot of extra video information on wanted footage before you even put something onto the timeline. So that's going to be five ways that you can cut video inside of DaVinci Resolve 17.1. I hope all of you learned something new from this video. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.